Hello everyone, my name is Hannah. Welcome to a new video. So I apologize for my voice. I am sick yet again, but I gotta get this video filmed, so we'll just have to suffer through it together. But today's video is going to be my first quarter wrap up. So I haven't done a wrap up video in a long, long time. So I thought it would be fun to do this year where I do a wrap up every three months of the year and I like keep it quick. My thing with wrap ups is that I'm usually like sitting here for so long, like droning on and talking about a book for a long time. And then when I edit it, it's just like, it's such a hassle. So I haven't been doing them in a while, but I thought if I could take some notes and have some of my like quick, concise thoughts, my rating, and then move on to the next book, keep it like under a minute per book. So we're going to do the first quarter, which is January, February, and March, and talk about the 24 books that I read in the first quarter of the year. So the first book that I read in 2024 was Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. I love this graphic novel series. It's very queer and very like coming of age. It follows Nick and Charlie. In this fifth volume, it's all about like finding where they want to go to college and like can their relationship survive a long distance kind of situation. It's very cute, very wholesome. I enjoyed myself. I gave this one four stars. Then I picked up Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I'm a huge Allie Hazelwood fan. I've loved all of her adult romance novels, but I was really nervous about this one because this is like considered her YA debut. I would consider this more new adult or like upper YA. The main characters are like 18 and 19, I think. So I would say it's new adult. I thought this one was super cute. I was kicking my feet. I loved the romance in this. I loved the guy. I think his name is Nolan. Yeah, I thought he was super cute. And I loved all of the chess. It's very chess heavy, as I'm sure you can tell from the cover, but it's about like 50-50 on like the romance and then on the like chess plot of it. So if you want something that's like more on the romance side, maybe you wouldn't enjoy this, but I love chess and so I found it all like very fascinating. So I really enjoyed this one and I think I gave it like five stars initially because I was like, I just loved it. But really it's more of like a four, 4.5 star. Then I did my tandem read of Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Maas. So this is the sixth and seventh book in the Throne of Glass series and the events of this book happen at the same time that the events of this book happen. We're just following different characters in different areas of this world so you can read them in tandem. There is a very specific like way to read them though. It's not just like read one chapter of this one then read one chapter of this one. Like you read five chapters of this one and then you'll read one chapter of this one and then you go back and read three chapters and then you go back and read five chapters. Like it's very specific to keep it so that like the things that happen in here are talked about in this one after they happen. And I even went through and like put little post-it notes of like when I'm supposed to move over to do like the reads in this one, which took me about an hour to put all those post-it notes in, but it was so worth it because when I was reading then I didn't really have to think about like when I needed to switch the tandem read. Yeah. This one is one of my favorite books in the series, so this was a solid five stars. I I read this one because like it's important to read it in the series, but my overall enjoyment for it is much less because all of my favorite characters are in this one. So I gave this one three stars this time around. I think originally I gave it four stars, but yeah, just like my enjoyment of this one is just so much less and it's such a chore to get through this one for me personally. A lot of people really love this book, but that's my thoughts on those. Then I read the book Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. I read this for my friend Lachlan's Patreon book club. This is a serial killer romantic comedy, which is kind of like what like drew my attention in on this one because you don't really hear romantic comedy associated with serial killer a lot. But basically the two main characters are serial killers in like the Dexter fashion, like they kill bad people so that way you can like root for them. But yeah, then they meet in this like kind of crazy way which is a little bit funny and then they decide to do this like yearly competition where they're hunting the same like bad person and whoever gets to kill them first wins the game that year and then of course they start to develop feelings for each other it was like 
made me laugh quite a bit and it was extremely entertaining so I gave this one four stars I thought it was so fun and I'll definitely continue on the series because there's like a spin-off trilogy following other characters then I picked up the new um, Wayward Children's book so this one's called Mislaid in Parts Half Known by Shauna McGuire this is the ninth book in the Wayward Children series I particularly love the installments when we are in the other like magical worlds so basically this series is children who go like through through, it's like portal fantasy like they go through a doorway to a different world and then when they end up back in our world and can't get back to like through their doorway and so some of them you see in our world coping with like these children who have gone to other magical places and then some of them are like set in those worlds I really like the ones that are set in other worlds this one it continued the story just fine but I wasn't as like invested in this one I gave this 3.5 stars all right, now we have a lot of Sarah J. Mass rereads. So first up is A Court of Silver Flame. I reread and annotated in this gorgeous paperback copy, the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, the black and silver. I just think it's so stunning. Yeah, I've read and annotated this book a lot of times, but I wanted to annotate in the paperback and I just love this book so, so much. I reread this one in anticipation for House of Flame and Shadow and I just had a really good time annotating in this one. Like I said, it's one of my favorite books of all time, so for sure, five stars. Then I did my reread of House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath. I didn't annotate in House of Earth and Blood because I was scared that I was going to run out of time because it takes so much extra time to annotate, but I did annotate in House of Sky and Breath. Can't decide which of these is like my favorite of the series. Maybe this one. I don't know. I really like Rune in this one. So I really like this one. But yeah, this is Sarah J. Mass's like foray into like adult fantasy, even though I still consider her other series to be more adult. They just started as like new adult or YA and then eventually got to be adult. But this one was with the intention of being adult. And it's her first like foray into urban fantasy with like modern stuff. So like the characters have cell phones and cars and they go to clubs and stuff like that. So a bit different than like her usual typical fantasies, but still very solid. This one has a like murder mystery element to it. And then this one obviously continues the plot. So I don't want to talk about too much about that one. So five stars for both of these. I love these books. And then of course my most anticipated release of 2024 was House of Flame and Shadow. So this is the finale to the Crescent City series. It was long awaited and I took the day, I took two days off of work actually. So on release day I went to go get this and then I hunkered down and I read this whole thing in like a day or two. I will say with this one there were lots of five star scenes in this one. Like I can pick out scenes in my head that I'm like that is for sure five stars. But there were also some things in this one that bothered me quite a bit. Main thing being that a lot of the like climax of the story were some things were happening really conveniently and just like too conveniently for me to like believe it and like it just felt like there weren't enough stakes for this for this to be like a believable like climax and ending to the story. I just wanted a little bit more from it and so I ended up giving this one four stars. So that was January for me. I didn't read a single book or finish a single book in February. I had a lot on my mind that month and like things that I was like using my brain power for otherwise. So I didn't get much reading done. I didn't get any reading done in the month of February. So I have no books to talk about for February. So we'll move right into March. And the first book that I picked up in March was Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I wanted a reread that was a bit comforting for me. And I've wanted to reread this book for a while now. It's one of my favorite books of all time. It's a book that I would recommend to pretty much anyone. It's basically all about what it is to be human and what it is to be an adult and like the pressures of that and obviously the anxiety that comes with that and it follows this like attempted bank robbery turned hostage situation which makes it sound like it's going to be like dark and like ooh suspenseful but it's totally the opposite of that. It's actually pretty funny and very wholesome and heartwarming so I would highly recommend reading this one if that sounds at all intriguing to you. This is for sure five stars. I wanted to annotate in this when I did my reread, but I was not in the mood to annotate. So I will reread this one again eventually and I'll annotate it then. But this time around, I didn't annotate it, but 
five stars. Then I did a buddy read of a fanfic, which is called Love and Other Historical Accidents by Pacific Rumbod. This is on AO3. You can read it for free on there. I was very lucky to have this copy handbound and gifted to me from my friend Mel so that we could annotate during our buddy read. And I had a great time annotating in this as well. This is a Dramine fanfic, so Draco and Hermione, but they're working on something with a time turner and they end up getting thrown back 200 years into the past and then their time turner breaks. So they are 200 years in the past and have to kind of like play act and pretend that they are from this time period so they don't like mess up with like the time space continuum or whatever, all while trying to figure out their way to get back to the present day. I really enjoyed this one. I'm not going to give fan fictions any ratings anymore. I really enjoyed this one. It was a really fun time. It's like two idiots in love and I just love Draco and Hermione so, so much. Then I read the book The Island by Adrian McKinty. I was in kind of a thriller mood and I still kind of am months later now, but I wanted to pick up some thrillers that I've heard so much about and I have had recommended to me and that I've wanted to read for years now and I just haven't. And this is one that my friend Ashley from Ashley's Little Library recommended and I've been meaning to get to it and the hold finally came through at my library. So I was like, you know what? Why not? This thriller is set on a remote island. This couple and their children go on a like vacation to Australia and they end up on this like remote island to do like a tour. And the children are actually the main character, the woman's um, stepchildren. And that adds like a conflict a little bit into it because they don't really like like her. They're not, she's not their mom. So, and she's quite a bit younger than their dad. Anyways, it's quite intense. They get trapped on this island and are basically being hunted. And so they're like stranded. They have no way to get to help and they're just trying to survive. And it is such a wild time. Like it's one of those where you kind of have to suspend your disbelief a little bit and just be here to be entertained. And boy, I was entertained. It was very entertaining. I had a good time with this one. I gave it four stars. Then I picked up a new adult fantasy romance called Heartless Hunter by Kristen Cicerelli. Other parts, or maybe it's just in the UK, other parts of the world, um, call this Crimson Moth. For the US, that's the series title, but we call it Heartless Hunter. So if you've heard of Crimson Moth or Heartless Hunter, it's the same book. This is a fantasy romance following a witch and a witch hunter. They basically are trying, both of them are trying to get information from the other and Rune is a witch and she's like a vigilante trying to help all these witches and this empire that's trying to kill them and Gideon is a witch hunter and he's trying to find the Crimson Moth who is Rune and he, he can't like outright ask her because then obviously she'll be more like sneaky about things. So they are both pretending to court one another to get information out of the other but the other doesn't know that they're like looking for this information and it's a whole web of lies and deceit and it's very very entertaining i think if you liked the book powerless by lord roberts it's nothing like similar to this at all but like for some reason the writing and like what i don't know something about it just reminded me of powerless it was definitely a solid fun time i will continue the series it's a duology so the next book that comes out is called rebel witch and i really had a fun time with this one the witch witch hunter aspect is like literally enemies to lovers and it's also best friends older brother trope so there's that i gave this one four stars it was a really fun time then I picked up another reread and that is Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. I was just trying to roll with like whatever I wanted to pick up and read. I was going to read that and I've wanted to reread this book for a long time. I didn't intend to annotate in this one. I don't have an annotation system but I just use like the light blue color tabs to match the cover and just a blue highlighter and highlighted a lot of my favorite quotes and stuff from this. It's a very beautiful and beautifully written book. It's set in the near future and most wild animals are extinct and our main character Franny is following these arctic terns who take the longest migration from the North Pole to the South Pole every year and she is convinced that this is their last migration that they're going to die off after this and so she wants to follow them. She's also got a bit of a mysterious past so there's that going on but it's just such a beautiful story and I just love it so much so five stars for this one. Oh I forgot to mention that the month of March was Realmathon so a lot of the books that I'm reading were like specifically geared towards earning my team extra points so it was like blue books and animals on the cover would earn my team extra points so a lot of these are blue books with animals on the cover 
just like The Road of Bones by Demi Winters. This is a Viking fantasy romance. It's also a grumpy sunshine trope. We follow our main character Scylla who is a bit on the run and she's trying to make it through this dangerous road called The Road of Bones and she ends up stowing away with this like Viking caravan and gets discovered and she's like hey listen I can be helpful to you. Please just help me get through this like road alive and so they agree to like kind of benefit each other here and so she ends up with this like band of vikings Scylla also has some kind of strange mysterious abilities and it's just it was a really good time I had a good time with it I haven't continued the series yet but I definitely want to it did get picked up by a traditional publisher though which is going to push back the publication of all of the other books I think it's supposed to be a pretty long series though so maybe wait to pick this one up until a few of the books come out but I really enjoyed this one I had a good time I gave it four stars Another reread for me was Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, one of my favorite books of all time. I got the paperback so that I could annotate in it and I have a whole annotate with me video up on my Patreon where I set up my annotation system and I annotate like the first like 100, 150 pages of this book. Okay, sorry if the like angle has changed at all. I just got a call from um, my doctor so... I can heal whatever it is that's happening right here. <laughs> but I think I was talking about how I annotated Strange the Dreamer and I have a full um, like hour long annotate with me for this book up on my Patreon. So if you wanted to see that, you can join Patreon. I'll leave it linked down below. Yeah, just one of the most like magical, whimsical books I've ever read. I love Lynn Taylor's writing. There's so many good quotes in here and I just absolutely love it. So five stars for this one. I picked up another thriller called The Fury by Alex Michaelides. He is the same author as The Silent Patient, which is one of my favorite thrillers that I've ever read. The Fury basically is another remote island setting and it's following this like famous actress and some of her friends. And it's told in like a dual timeline and you find out that someone gets killed but you don't know who and you don't know why and so you're like trying to figure out like what's going on, what led to this because you know there's the celebrity like is she the one who was killed or was it one of her friends? Basically you're just trying to find out like what's going on, who done it on a remote island kind of setting and this one is just I did not. I was not as intrigued by this like mystery as I was with this author's other two books and I've steadily gone down. I read The Silent Patient, I gave that one five stars I read the maidens I gave that one four stars and now I've read this one and I'm giving it three stars because I just like didn't really care that much about what was going on in this one so it was fine but like it was just kind of eh I did another reread lots of rereads happening but I reread Hex by Jenny Fagan again because of the blue cover with an animal on the cover and it's very short it's only 100 pages this is a like magical realism following the Galus Duncan witch trial which is a very famous witch trial from the 1500s Scotland witch trials it's very like horrible and harrowing what happened to her and it's very difficult to read at times so I would recommend checking the triggers for this book before reading into it but it's very beautifully written and it's kind of a comparison of like the way women were treated back then and how they're still kind of treated pretty poorly right now. It's just really beautiful but also like I said very dark so I gave this one four stars. And I read Princess Floralinda and the 40 Flight Tower by Tasman Muir. This is a fantasy novella and it's kind of like a Rapunzel retelling. This witch curses a princess to live at the top of this 40 flight tower and every flight, every level is like a different like magical challenge basically and she's been waiting there for this prince to like come and make it up all 40 flights to come save her and she gets tired of waiting and so she decides to save herself and is going down the flights and each level like I said is a different challenge for her to overcome. It does get a bit gory at times but it was still really fun and I really like a character called the Cobweb who's like a little pixie fairy and I just loved, I loved Cobweb. It was a really quick read and it was like perfect for Realmathon so I gave this one four stars. Then I read Galatea by Madeline Miller which is a short story like Greek retelling. Honestly I don't have much to say about this one at all. It was only like 20 pages. I didn't give it a rating. I didn't really enjoy it but like it's a short story. There was like not much to it so I've got nothing to say about this but I did read it. And then I picked up The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. The sequel and finale to The Stolen Heir. This phenomenon series to The Cruel Prince following Oak and Surin and it basically picks up right where The Stolen Heir left 
left off. I really enjoy The Stolen Air more than I thought I was going to, but this one, I don't know. The way that the storytelling took a turn, I just wasn't enjoying it as much. It was fine. It was just kind of boring. I gave it three stars. Then I did my reread for Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. So again, one of my favorite books of all time. I did initially intend to annotate in this one, but because annotating slows me down and I wasn't really in a big annotating mood in the month of March, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to read it because I want to get to the sequel that recently came out, Empire of the Damned. And so I reread this one and yes, absolutely love this one. Solidified why it's one of my favorite books of all time. It's one of the best fantasy books that I've ever read and I will stand by that. It's just so, so good. I love the way Jay Kristoff writes fantasy. It's vampires, it's violent, it's bloody, it's like just like the way that it's told, it's in three different timelines. You're in the present timeline where the main character, Gabriel de Leon, is like captured by the vampires and he's like reciting and telling his tale, which I really love when fantasy books do that. And so then you're going back in time to when he was like a young boy learning how to be a vampire hunter. They call them silver saints. And then you're also following a timeline when he's about 32 years old, which is from the present time, it's about three years in the past and when he is a grown man and has left the order and on like this quest basically. And so you kind of jump around in the story quite a bit and it can be a little bit confusing, but it makes for such an amazing like ending to it when everything all starts coming together. And oh, I just love it. I love it so much. Five stars for sure. And then the last book that I read for this quarter for Realmathon for the month of March was Wedgie and Gizmo. Let's see, what is the author's name? Suzanne Sel and the reason why I picked this one up is because the like we could earn extra points if we read a book with our team's like a word related to our team and we were team creation and somebody looked up synonyms for creation and the word gizmo was on that list and I thought that was hilarious so in the discord I was like if anybody has any like book recommendations with the word gizmo let me know and somebody was like actually there's a blue book with an animal on the cover and it has Gizmo in the name. So it's perfect for our team. And I was like, I'm going to read it. And then we all kind of started like unofficially buddy reading this children's book about a corgi who thinks he's a superhero and a guinea pig who is like an evil genius. And it was really funny. And it's just like hilarious that it became like our team's unofficial buddy read because it earned us so many extra points. I decided not to rate this one because like it's a children's book and I just didn't feel like rating a children's book, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> So there you have it. Those are the 24 books that I read in the first quarter. Like I said, I didn't read a single book in the month of February. So really it was only for January and March. So hopefully my next reading wrap up will include all three months and I will have read something in all three months. But that is going to be it for this video. Let me know what your favorite book from the first quarter of the year is. I know it's been a little while. I really should have posted this video like in April, but say la vie. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know by leaving a calendar emoji down in the comments down below and let me know what your favorite book was for the first quarter of the year. Like I said, I will leave my Patreon linked down below if you ever want more content from me or reading sprints. I do those twice a month on my Patreon. And thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.